reveal The day disappeared with the day it was healed Composing gloves here And today we will be reviewing the wonderful Herring Clarinet by Ember Tone. We start our journey, our review, with some wonderful legato playing, demonstrating the expressivity of the instrument. As you can hear, we have a wonderful, tasteful legato that comes in and is not overwhelming to the sound. When used appropriately, it sounds quite musical. We also have a consistency of quality across the entire range of the clarinet. You will take note that notes that are closer together emphasize the legato playing. Versus notes that are further away, the legato playing is less apparent, allowing for a faster playing style. as opposed to a longer transition favored by some other styles of playing and other contact instruments, which favors the fast playing style. If you've seen the original Ember Tone review or their walkthrough, he starts off playing Flight of the Bumblebee and it's quite impressive. But you could definitely accomplish some pretty clear speed with this instrument. I would also like to draw your attention to the excruciating detail of the various samples. We have samples from the softest of clarinet playing to extraordinarily loud clarinet playing and a very nice transition between them. This is not the same as a volume knob. It is much more powerful. And let's go ahead and go to the shorts for this. So I'm gonna play some staccato sounds. As you can see, quite musical, quite expressive, a huge, tremendous range. Having a sample of, you know, the clarinet playing at a mid volume, a low volume, or, you know, forte, mezzo forte, piano, it, it greatly establishes um, expressivity in the instrument, it makes it much more flexible. Sometimes you want a staccato that sounds like this. The, uh, I would also like to draw your attention to there are two types of staccatos there's regular staccato, which, uh, let's is this longer one. And then we also have stacchi, stacchitissimo, whatever. Really, really staccato, very short. Stacchitissimo, yeah, I don't know what I'm, I don't know why I'm tripping. And this is also very musical and it's controlled by dynamic ranges. So if I play soft notes, I get stacchitissimo. And if I play harder or louder volumes, I will get uh, staccato, which is the longer, which is also very musical. As you can see, great for phrasing in real time playing. Along with our extraordinary dynamics and vibrato, we have, inc we have included for us uh, flutter and multi. So I'm gonna turn my dynamic all the way up to demonstrate flutter. Flutter is when you instruct the clarinet player to do this. <laughs> Roll your R while you're playing. And as a result, you get a rather aggressive tone. Uh, let's go to sustain for this. It can be really nice when combined with a pitch bend. Let's see if I can manage that. Uh, 
Who doesn't want to do the pitch bend for me? As you can see, it's like, that's really great for some styles of playing. Very expressive. Consider adding it in your next piece of music. Uh, so that's Flutter. Generally, it comes up as a part of a longer note, similar to the way you would treat vibrato. We also have multiphonics. Multiphonics um, is they've just mixed in higher, you know, higher harmonic content is going to come in on when you play this. And this is also really, really tasteful with a pitch bend. And it's also, it sounds quite nice on the low end. So you get that gritty texture down there on the low end. A clarinet player can also simulate uh, something similar to this texture via the use of what's called a growl. And a growl is when you sort of gargle your throat and play the instrument at the same time. And it modulates the sound of the instrument, making it sound really sort of like, you know, it sounds like you're growling. You're basically, you're growling through your instrument. That's why it's called a growl. But it, it produces a, a texture similar to this. Uh, so there you go. We have these options. And then, of course, having on the shorts, as you've already seen, having this wide range of dynamics is insanely helpful. And then another thing that's really nice is the upper end of this clarinet. It sounds immaculate. It's great. This is the clarinet player whose samples are favoring us today. And a very excellent player, as you could tell by the recording. Um, some of the recordings, though, have mouth noise in them, and let's see if we can find one. Typically on the upper dynamic stuff. You can hear them going... Um, on this note, I think it's more hearable. On some of them, it's a lot more audible. This just comes from playing the clarinet for so long, your mouth gets tired, some of the air seeps out the sides. Some clarinet players think it sounds uh, nice. They like it. They feel it's got a natural kind of quality. But in general, all the instructors I have seek to destroy this behavior. Um, so it just depends on what you like. Some people think it sounds great. I don't think it really makes an impact in the negative direction. I, I think it's negligible in this instrument. I think it still sounds awesome. Especially if, especially if you include additional notes. So we have sustain. On the sustains, we also have a mono mode, which is the legato you've been hearing, and a poly mode, which is basically sustains as you would normally hear them. So that's the sustains mode. Nothing too crazy there. It's just long notes. So if you want to play uh, in polyphony, that's how you would do it. It also here it sounds excellent in fast playing. And having this option right here is insanely convenient if you're not an orchestral composer who has a template set up. Because the only way to get multiple notes out of something that's been designated to be legato oftentimes is to have two instances of that open. In this case, you can have one instance open and switch via a key switch, which are these blue keys down here, between mono and poly. And that is something that is super like convenient. Very, very useful. So those, there are your options. So I could be playing legato. One second, get those nice slurs, and then suddenly go. You know, something like that. So that's that's just really, really helpful. Uh, we also have a trill option. So the trill is controlled by these green keys, controls the direction of your trill up or down. And if I play, if I hold down this note and play note, I get a trill. So these are like little key switch notes you would put in there. Uh, to add a momentary trill. And that's how you would go about doing that. It sounds great. Um, strengths of the instrument. I've already sort of mentioned the dynamic degree in the legato playing and the smoothness of playing across legato and the sustained version along with poly are all in, in incredible strengths. I think make the instrument worth it right there. I think it's about $100. I don't quite remember at the moment. And uh, yeah, really, really awesome. I got it as part of a bundle. I thought I bought it only for this clarinet and got a whole bunch of other goodies along with it. 
Uh, so that's a really, really powerful thing. Things, maybe weaker points, not necessarily like bad qualities. I already mentioned the air thing, and that's sort of a, a personal taste matter. And I honestly don't mind it in this library. Other libraries, there's sometimes there's a note where you're like, oh, why'd they do this on this note? It didn't sound that good. And I can understand it if it's in the throat tone range. Uh, clarinets around G or so have a not so great quality. Um, but in this case, you know, that does not sound bad at all. That's a, that's a really good sounding G. But if I go down to the low end, I uh, it sounds it sounds fine, but it doesn't sound as good as it could. And I, being a clarinet player, these are like the notes where it really comes through, and it's got sort of this airy quality to it. So I was a little bummed out by that. Being someone who has spent hours and hours playing long tones, um, I thought these would sound a little more, you know, a little less like that. I thought they would sound a little more strong. Like that's that's pretty good. I don't know. I just feel like there's some extra tonal quality that could have been there that wasn't there. But that's you know that's another personal thing, not a big deal at all, and it still sounds great. Otherwise, we have reverb and round robin built in, which allow us if we're playing shorts, let's play one note and you can hear there's a variation in sampling there, which will add to our realism. So that's a really great thing to have. Uh, you can turn it on or off depending on, you know, how intense you want to be with CPU processing. You will notice that it takes up a gig. Uh, they have a light version if you desire to, you know, reduce some of the footprint here. And you could always try sample loading techniques um, like deleting, you know, emptying your sample pool and whatever. Uh, we also have Ensemble. Now, in the background, there's actually been several of them playing. If I have just one playing. <laughs> Let's go to a sustain mode and have it in poly mode so you can hear it. Okay, so there's one player. Now let's turn them all on. And this stuff up here controls the variation. So we have a pitch 10, timing is 55, chaos is 16, basically how together your instrument sound. We notice we get some panning from our panning here. If I remove these by clicking away. I put them all back, it sounds much more full. Whoops. I don't know what went on there, but you get the idea. So very cool. We also have in the configure um, some options that I'm taking advantage of right now. So we have our key switch. You're able to change your key switches and we're able to designate the CC controllers. I have restructured mine to take advantage of the knobs configured in my chosen MIDI uh, controller. So I'm using BRSO Articulate, which allows me to uh, have things set up in a really convenient way. And I've changed the controllers here so that they will be controlled externally here. So that's what is going on there. And that is pretty much the ensemble. It's a uh, it's really great sounding ensemble. And I've given my strengths, my weaknesses. Uh, out of 10, probably like an 8.5. Um, just because it'd be cool to have some additional options. It'd be pretty hard to get a 10. Uh, but for example, we could have another legato speed, something that allows us to control the transition time. That would be really helpful. But for this, you got to also consider just how simple this is. In reality, you could just drop this in and it sounds incredible right out, right out of the get-go. So probably like a nine, somewhere in that range. Just sounds great. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. If you have any questions about this, let me know if you would like uh, to me to tell you something about the instrument. Perhaps I didn't demonstrate very clearly here. Drop a comment, subscribe, and have a blessed day. Walking down the street with the black concrete. I was lowering my shades in the middle of the night. I felt like I was here, like I could steer. But then the triple came into my sight. Colors fell and shapes appeared. I saw what it meant to disappear. What I thought was you was me. We all felt it.